give way to the number. Actually, I never applied for this job. I was elected to my fifth term in Congress, uh, unopposed, this May 9, 2022. Walang kalaban, uh, fifth term, and uh, I was hoping to be, and uh, I was confirmed to be the next majority leader of Congress, which of course will never happen again. Will not, will not happen. Dapat majority leader po tayo ng House of Representatives. But this appeal of the president to get me into government and to get me into the DOJ really struck a chord inside me. Kung di ko tanggapin to, babalik pa ba yung pagkakataon na ibinigay sa akin ng ating Pangulo na maglingkod sa ating bayan? Will this ever come back? No, it will not come back. And second, kung di ko tanggapin to, Ano mo pa ang ihahanap ko sa ating Pangulo? Isang matalik na kaibigan, nakasama ko na sa Kongreso, a good friend from the past, a person elected by 31 million people, Filipinos. Many of you elected him together with me. What, what face will I show if I did not accept this job? Because it is a challenge that I never imagined to be. Uh, that I never imagined would be a part of my life. And so now, when I wake up in the morning, it just is about work. It's about the things we have to do and the things we have to undo in our government. And in this position, in the Department of Justice, you have to cross the different paths within government. It doesn't stop with the DOJ. Every problem that comes up helps us find a solution not only in the way that we act as prosecutors, not only in the way that we, we free the people from the jails, or not only in the way that we make sure the land titles are stable, the land title system is stable. There are so many ways to look at this position and say, the country really needs a lot of change. And I'll give you an example. That struck me as very important when I spoke with the president last Thursday. As we were discussing the case of Percy Lapid. Because uh, I didn't I wasn't into the Percy Lapid case. When it happened, I was in Geneva defending the country's position in the Human Rights Committee and uh, before the Convention of Civil and Political Rights. And uh ko may mga problema. But just the same, Percy Lapid was killed when I was abroad. So, and I was very happy that uh, the PNP, together with Secretary Avalos had already revealed to the people that the case was solved. But this opened up a lot of worms, a kind of worms. And I was speaking with the president. He asked me one question that really struck me. And probably will also be important to you. Ano ba ang dapat natin gawin sa police, sa PNP? Are you one with me in believing that we have any problems with the police? With the way that... It's not, we're not talking about policemen as bad people. We're talking about a structure of a very powerful body that is not made to be accountable in so many ways. And so, we spoke about it. And after that, I would say, this is the advocacy of Tessie. No? Tessie MC has been the advocate of this ever since. Accountability mechanisms should be put in place properly. Accountability mechanisms. Uh, in the United Nations, they're always asking me, what can you do about this problem? Because I've always stated no? that it is not state policy to abuse power. An abuse of police power is not what we want as a country and that we have to correct it. And so my conversation with the president came back to that point. We have to amend the law of the Philippine National Police so that the accountability, accountability mechanism in place will be put out of the control of the chief PNP, the International Internal Affairs Service, together with the Human Resource Management 
staff of their PNB so that there will be a, a way to balance the, the workings of the Philippine National Police. That way they can embed people from internal affairs into the different departments, into the different offices, so that all abuses can be checked. That is one of the things that the President discussed with me last Thursday. And I think it's very important for us to know that our President has a passion to serve our country in the best way possible. And he, it's something that comes from two people who were once in Congress and now are in the executive and now we're telling us and we're telling ourselves we should have done that a long time ago. But there's never, it's never too late because things can change and we can make this country a better place to live in. Once we solve these problems that beset us as a country, we will be an unstoppable country in terms of progress. We always shoot ourselves in the foot. The enemies of the state keep, keep bearing down on what our country is all about. But in the end, we know we are a good country. We're just waiting for the right chance to rise from the darkness that envelops us in many a time, in many a night, many a day. When things happen and nothing is done, seemingly done, to address the problems that are there in front of us. And so, maybe I can tell you that the Department of Justice is there to be compassionate to our people. On Wednesday, we will free more than 400 people again. Pakakawala namin, mga nakakulong, na hindi nakapatarahan. Last September 13, during the President's birthday, we set free 371 uh, convicts that had to be set free. Uh, that we, that we, we thought it's best to do, given the congestion of the jails and the fact that these people didn't deserve to be in prison a day longer. So on Wednesday, uh, we talked to the Mercules, more than 400 will be set free. The pardons of 318 people are still waiting, awaiting signature, but are being done already. And so, when we look at the problem of corrections, something is being done. But, of course, what happened today, what happened this week, will be something that is really opened our eyes to what really kills our system. But the solutions were in place already prior to what happened today. Ang mundin luba po ang pinakamalaking prison sa buong mundo. It is the biggest mega prison in the world. There's no other prison that contains 29,000 people in one single area. And that is not a badge of honor. And I confirmed some sa akin yan, my guests. Um, on Friday, well. Itong Monday, yun, tahapon lang. Oh, no. um, guests on Friday, we confirmed sa akin. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime confirmed it to me. It's the biggest mega prison in the world. The maximum security prison has almost 18,000 people inside. 18,000 people in 15 buildings. But these buildings were made to house 300 to 400 people only. And now they're housing much more. Gigulibo po ang hamak po ng mga building na ito. So you can imagine how, how different it is. When I went inside the maximum security prison to go on a tour, it looked like a movie. Not a home scene from a movie, but the movie is not about prison. The movie I remember is about zombies. Because again, it's so, when you're passing through and you see their faces and they're just pale and looking at you, not doing anything. It reminds you that there is a sea of humanity waiting to do something good also for our country. They are suffering for what they've done before, but they're also waiting to do good in the end. There is redemption in the end. So it really strengthened my resolve to do things properly in this, in this respect. So prisons is one, uh, the congestion of prisons. Um, the other thing that ails us, of course, is the prosecution system. Pagkaya yung nagdedemanda, makikita nyo yung fiscal at yung police hindi magkasundo. The, the, the police, uh, the judges will scold the fiscal, or the judges will scold the police, or they will, the judges will scold both of them, 
because they're not working properly. And so we are now doing a something uh, something revolutionary within the prosecution system. That is the case build-up system. All the crimes in this country are built on probable cause, based on probable cause that a person accused is probably guilty of the crime. And we are setting a higher bar for the police and the prosecutors to follow. What is the higher bar? Probable cause plus a reasonable certainty that the person's charge will be convicted thereof. That is a very big cry from the probable cause standard. But we have to set the bar higher so that we do not put people needlessly in jail. A person wrongfully jailed is forever wronged. Forever will bear the scars of, of involuntary detention. Will forever bear the scars of being innocent but charged with something they should never be charged of. So we will change this and uh, we will go to get to that point. And it's something that the entire judges and the, and the justices are talking about now because they know we are on the cusp of changing something that has not been changed in 50, 60, 100 years. We will, we will get there and that is the way that we believe it should be. The land registration administration also is problematic. Uh, land titles are, 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 are being magically created or made to disappear. But we are doing something about it and we are digitizing everything with regards to the LRA. And for the first time, the Department of Justice has a chief technology officer assigned to just one thing. The one thing that he's assigned to is to make sure that the connectivity of the officers of the Department of Justice becomes unassailable, that the information needed will be at the tip of the fingers, fingertips. It's a tough job, but it has to be done, and the deadline is yesterday. And so, and we have here the NBA director, and uh, Luigi Delemos has been a good friend. I met him 24 years ago when I was still serving 